The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We I mean, might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Welcome to the Wayne Dupree Podcast, along with the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. Just glad to be here. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey. hey. <laughs> and, and Mr. Jason Robson from Muslim Soda. Gentlemen, happy Monday. Going to be an exciting day, folks. Make sure you like, comment, share. That's how we beat the algorithm. Most importantly, we really want you to share today. We We, we have two special guests coming on. We have our sister, uh, who's coming on in just a few seconds from the new federal state of China. Uh, if this is your first time watching the show, uh, we we had developed uh, a, a friendship, almost a family-like type connection with the new federal state of China. They are trying to take down the CCP, um, and they're trying to exploit or expose um, what the CCP has been doing to our government, um, our, our media, uh, and uh, uh, our entertainment uh, and bl- bl- they bring names. They even said Putin had anal cancer or something like that last week. Uh, <laughs> it was on fire. I was like, huh? I know. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. All right. I believe y'all. And then uh, we also have coming back to the show. We haven't had him on for a long time, but like, well, my friends, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, will be joining us once again on this here show on this here show all right we got a whole lot to talk about but um let me let me bring on our let me bring on our wonderful sister uh let's see ayla okay there we go there we go hey ayla how are you hi win hi hutch hi jason nice to meet you guys very honored to be back on the program thank you for having me as i said monday uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Happy Monday. Usually, we have you later, but I appreciate you giving us earlier time this week. I did not want to miss having you on because you um, give us so much information about um, the, um, the CCP um, and what they're doing and how y'all are trying to take them down. Uh, um, real quick, if you can, because I know we're probably getting some first-time viewers let our viewers know what the in uh, what the new federal state of China is all about, real quick. Absolutely, the new federal state of China was established on June fourth, twenty twenty, by Mr. Miles Guo and co-founded by Mr. Steve K. Bannon. Uh, we were very honored to carry on the mission of the whistleblowers movement, which is to take down the current Chinese government, take down the CCP. Um, our you know main mission is to expose 
the financial corruption uh, and insider intelligence of the Chinese Communist Party and help and gather all of the freedom loving people from the West to understand the evilness of this government and to take down the CCP. I like yeah. explain to the audience quickly another facet of that, uh, how you try to educate people to separate the people of China from the CCP. Absolutely. And I think, you know, this is the key concept that was raised by Mr. Mao Skuo and by the whistleblowers movement. Most Chinese people, uh, you know, uh, named as Chinese de deplorables, they, they are considered as victims of the Communist Party. They're separated from the CCP. And in fact, that within the whistleblowers movement, the majority, you know, of the Communist Party members might even provided intelligence to support the new federal state of China, to support a U.S. government to launch a series of actions to you know be against against the CCP. So uh, Mao said that you know one time that you know 99% of the members inside the CCP are good people and only 1% and maybe even less than 1% of CCP's high officials have the power to control the Chinese people, have the power to you know launch a series of actions to go against the West. These are the targets uh, you know of the United States and these are the targets of the Chinese people. So, you know, CCP cannot represent Chinese people just like what I do and what, you know, our brothers and sisters from this movement do. We do not want to be represented by the CCP. And, and this is primarily why we speak out loud. We want to take down the Communist Party. You know, it's important, too, especially since we got a lot of new viewers on. Probably the first time you've been on right before President Trump. So congratulations. Yeah. Cross that yeah. off your checkbox. But uh, for our our friends and family members in China, like, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for giving people an overview. And it's important for us to understand the, the government of China is corrupt. The people of China are just like you and I. Um, with that said, it sounds like there's some news coming out that Xi Jinping might be having some health problems. He skipped a, a speech this weekend. And what, what do you guys know about that? Absolutely. And in fact, that, you know, a recent phone call from Miles uh, from Brooklyn MDC revealed that the whistleblowers movement obtained a whole agenda and related information of Xi Jinping's travel to the BRICS nations event. She not only skipped one important, you know, speech, but also reduced to his meeting by two thirds. She, he is extremely mm. concerned about his own health and, and home safety about his travel. And you know, uh, moreover, that Miles revealed in his phone call that inside the Chinese Communist Party right now, the force is divided into two families. One is Xi Jinping, the other is Wang Qishan, the former vice premier of the Chinese Communist Party. And more interestingly, that, that Mao said that she is likely to lose to Wang and the West should, you know, stop its illusion and and, uh, and defend the Chinese Communist Party to understand how evil it is and to take down the system. You know, um, I I have been tweeting out on a regular basis uh, the information about Miles Guo, Guo your leader. Um, he's been jailed in the United, ladies and gentlemen. He's been jailed in the United States without a bond for 166 days. He's been in jail. Uh, in New York, uh, New Jersey, New York, uh, for 166 days without bond. Uh, the, the judge says that she doesn't want to release him because she doesn't trust him. Uh, he is a leader of the new federal state of China, just like Ayla said. But, uh, um, and uh, let's see, let's see. I, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I get all that straight. But yeah, uh, with 166 days in China, and but he still uh, needs your prayers and he still needs um, 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 your support, especially at the new federal state of China. The website is down below. Uh, some information that I also heard was that um, Terry, G Terry Guo, Terry Guy, uh, is announcing a run for the Taiwan presidency. Uh, I, I guess he's pledging to. Fix China ties. Can you explain on? Can you expand on that? Absolutely, Win. And in fact, that Terry Guo was mentioned by Mr. Miles in his early broadcast in, in 2018 and 2019. This is not the first time that he announced a presidency run for Taiwan. And in fact, that Terry Guo was named by the CCP as Donald Trump of Taiwan. 
So think about that, how much the Chinese Communist Party had confidence in, in electing Terry Guo as the president of Taiwan, that in early years, Mao's mentioned that, you know, he has, uh, you know, uh, he has business partners uh, that conducted business with Terry Guo, and his relationships happen to be Terry Guo's relationships as well. This is why he obtained large intelligence of how Terry Guo collaborated with the Communist Party, cowed out to the CCP, and, and tried to steal technology from Apple, from, from the West. He was considered as the biggest theft you know, uh, of technology uh, because because of his business, Foxconn. And it, in fact, that, you know, uh, when Foxconn faced a lot of, you know, the workers' suicide events in China, it's the CCP's Central Intelligence Agency and PLA military helped Terry Guo out and moved his Fox, uh, Foxconn business factory from Shenzhen, China to Henan province. And this was witnessed uh, by, you know, Mr. Mao when he was in China right away. And the, the, re the key reason for the Chinese Communist Party to choose Terry Guo and, and, and to support him was into three rearms. One was Terry Guo has large networks in the Taiwan production fields in these industrial fields that he was able to connect these resources with mainland China. And the most important one was he has a profound relationship with many CCP government officials, including Xi Jinping, the president of China, Wang Qishan, the former vice premier of the Chinese Communist Party, and Terry Guo has various interests relationships with Jiang Zemin, the former president of PRC, and, and conducted business with, with Jiang, we believe. So these are the primary reasons that the Chinese Communist Party believe that Terry Guo uh, you know, align with the interest of the Chinese Communist Party, not just the former officials, the current officials, but also the future officials of the CCP. His election run, you know, will will make huge impact on on the future of Taiwan and and all these Taiwan deplorables. So I think that I hope the United States understand how serious this issue is and pay more attention on Terry Guo and his ties with the Communist Party. Okay, that's pretty. Uh profound. Uh, some other things that we were looking at last week, uh, we were talking about the Spratly Islands, the South China Sea and things going on in that area. And uh, Isla, it looks like the United States Navy starting to sniff around there a little bit. Do you know anything about that? Absolutely. And, and, and in fact, that, you know, South China Sea, including the Philippine Sea, were 100 percent completely controlled by the Chinese Communist Party in the past years. And this is one important strategy for the Chinese Communist Party to dominate the Asia, you know, uh, energy network supply. And Taiwan is simply one important link in CCP's Asia strategy. And if it controls Taiwan, if it controls South China Sea and, and the Philippine Sea, that means the Chinese Communist Party succeeded in obtaining the Asian network supply energy. And, and in fact, that it proves to the West that the dictatorship and the tyranny works out in Taiwan and, and, and thus can threaten Japan, threaten Korea, and it thus can, you know, destroy the U.S. because it controls the, uh, controls the energy network supply. This is the ultimate goal that the Chinese Communist Party constantly making these, you know, naval movements and naval practices in the South China Sea because it targets with the with this, you know, energy supply network directly. You know, it's interesting with Taiwan being in the news. I'm just do you ever see a world where they militarily move on Taiwan? It looks like they're trying to do like they're doing with the U.S., where they're just bribing officials and that sort of thing. But do you see a world where it actually escalates to a physical combat? Well, I think that to understand the Chinese Communist Party, the world has different kinds, right? It's not just how physically that the PLA had moved to toward or invade Taiwan. Think about that they have deeply penetrated the Taiwan election and asked King, right. you know, Terry Guo to run presidency for Taiwan. I think all of the Taiwanese people needs to ask themselves a question. Is this the president they want to elect? Do you want your future to be handled over to the Chinese Communist Party by Terry Guo? And, 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 and Terry Guo was not, you know, it was just one of the inside traders of, of Taiwan. This is why the, the West should be very worried and concerned about its future and, and the election result. And, you know, when, when Terry Guo visits its mainland, Mao's indicated in his broadcast that he was able to conduct in-person meetings with the Central Committee back in time. So thinking about how much the Chinese Communist Party had made effort in bribing and collaborating with Terry Guo to control the Taiwan presidency. 
And you know, if he became the Taiwan presidency, and and now Taiwan became the garden of the CCP, and and it just controls the the Asian military, and it achieved the CCP's you know uh, you know Asian strategy uh, a deployment. So these are all all kinds of invasion intentions coming from the Chinese Communist Party alongside with the PLA threats. You know, I'm seeing a lot of cl um, climate activists over there. Uh, well, um, supposedly, uh, I thought I thought that it was from China, but maybe it's not. But um, the 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 amount of scrutiny or the amount of um, uh, attacks on the Chinese people, if they try to deviate from G, uh, how should how should Americans be looking at that, especially from the American side? Okay, I mean, well, it, it's like, okay, well, if the communists are doing that to their own people in China, what should America look forward to? Well, I think that's a great question. And, and I think that, you know, alongside with American, I think for all people who want to understand how the, what the Chinese Communist Party want to do was to follow the money and follow the women relationship. Many of the intelligence came directly from their mistress, you know, relationship network and, and their flow of funds. And these are the two primary source that the United States government can trace back and to understand the plan of the Chinese Communist Party. And most importantly, the whistleblowers movement and the new federal state of China has been constantly providing intelligence of the CCP to the United States government. And I think that the U.S. government should be, pay highly attention on that, on, on you know, any of the information coming directly from Miles and, and from this movement. I know that that the physical uh, warfare that we were talking about earlier isn't necessarily always the tactic used by the CCP, but I'm a little concerned. I heard President Trump talking about the South China Sea situation, and he's certainly very familiar with aircraft and things like that because he owns them. Uh, and he said that the airstrip is 20,000 feet. He says Ooh. a private aircraft needs about 4,000 feet to land. I had no idea about those things, but listening to him, he said, I can land my 747 in less than 20,000 feet. That just makes you, I mean, that's a, a pretty wicked jump off spot. I just wonder if, if the NFSC is paying attention uh, to physical military buildup by the CCP and the PLA. Absolutely. And in fact, that we have supporters within the PLA that were supported, you know, who were supporting the new federal state of China, supporting the whistleblowers movement, and had been constantly contact Mr. Miles before his prosecution. Uh, these intelligence and information that we gathered were from these supporters who worked, still worked under the PLA. They take their life at risk to support this movement and, 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 and they take their life under risk every single day, every single minute, just to, you know, wanted to make sure that the West understands that even inside the Chinese Communist Party, they have a lot of freedom loving people. The understanding that a potential collapse of the CCP is inevitable. That's why, you know, they stand out with the Chinese, with, you know, the, the other freedom Chinese loving people with this movement, and they want to take down the Chinese Communist Party. So there are, you know, a bunch of intelligence were, you know, non-public because of Mr. Mao's prosecution, but we believe that the mission has never been paused. And if you want to understand CCP's most classified intelligence, the new federal state of China is the number one place that you should go. I was going to say my favorite part of working with the new federal state of China is they always bring receipts. And, you know, it's easy for people to get on shows and make a claim or that sort of thing. But if you haven't, go to nfsofficial.com and they have court documents, they have filings, they have videos. And these videos are great because it's Miles Go saying something five years ago. And mm -hmm. you think, was that the new, like that came out in the news today. How was yeah. he talking about that five years ago that that was going to happen? So it's it's truly remarkable. Um, speaking of, of remarkable, it's uh, becoming election season in the United States, and we've got the next COVID variant coming out. So do you guys have any any takes on that? I, I saw some reports that there were some outbreaks in China. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, uh, first of all, to understand the COVID pandemic, it was 
designed by the Chinese Communist Party. It was intentionally released from Wuhan Institute of Virology. Every people should trace back, you know, the origin of this COVID pandemic virus. In this movement, we call COVID-19 as CCP virus. There's no doubt that it is Communist Party's strategy to conduct such a biological warfare. And especially with, you know, a, a, an election season to, to be coming and to be expecting from the United States, I think both parties should pay highly attention on the strategies to deal with the Chinese Communist Party, not to collaborate, not to wait, but how to defeat the CCP. Well, I, um, Ayla, I want to thank you for joining us here um, today. And uh, believe me, the, the information that you have. And 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 like um, Jason said, um, your website, nfscofficial.com, uh, it's 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 a cornucopia of um, videos and, and and papers and documents that the American people, all of you need to go and check, visit it bookmark it and share it uh, and I, because what is happening over there to China is slowly has been slowly happening over here in the United States and they are working hard to 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 try to bring down the CCP over there in China and they're and and they're trying to warn us the American people if y'all don't start doing the same thing, Y'all can face the same thing that uh, bi that uh, billions are facing over there in China. As a matter of fact, I remember Roy telling me six hundred thousand people are making less than a hundred and fifty no uh, um a hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's correct. Less, I mean, six six hundred thousand people are making a hundred and fifty dollars a month to live on in China. Crazy. Think about that. Okay. Um, Ayla, did you have any last thoughts for our audience real quick before um, before you go? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank you, Wayne and Jason and Hutch for inviting me uh, to be on your program. This is always my honor and, and the honor of our brothers and sisters in this movement to have a, such a great opportunity to speak out uh, for Mr. Mouse and speak out for, for the new federal state of China. I think that, you know, for, for the United States that we want to the West and we want every, you know, freedom loving people to understand that nowadays that Chinese people are able you know, to, to fight against the CCP, that Chinese people have the courage, have the ability and, and, and have the you know, language. Uh, we, we've overcome the language barrier and we, we would be able to conduct a health interaction with the West without the Chinese Communist Party, that the West should look on to you know, the whistleblowers movement and the new federal state of China. Chinese people will not stop until we take down the CCP. Girl, you bad. You 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 bad and awesome and all and all of our family members over there at the New Federal State Church. Thank you, Ayla. Thank you so much for joining. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, sir, for having me. Um, in just in just a few minutes, uh, we're gonna have the president of the United States, President Donald Trump, joining us here on the Wayne Dupree um, podcast, along with uh, HBJ and. Uh, JR, JRR, uh, we're gonna be asking him some questions. Um, I know, I know some of y'all have said uh, that he's been getting softball questions of late, so uh, we're we're gonna try to ask him some questions. Uh, he is under four indictments. Right. I know, I know, right? I know it's crazy. I'm surprised I he's mean, talking at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we 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 um. As a matter of fact, uh, I have an intro. I have a quick intro. I want to play for y'all. This intro is what we. I mean, the last time that, uh, well, actually, we made it afterwards, but um, this was the intro that we used to play uh, back in the day after Donald Trump was on the show. We we interviewed him like five times. We interviewed him five times on the show, and also I have. I have to. Okay, that sounds anyway. like him. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be very interesting to uh, to see what, what comes of this. I, I'll tell you, the guy's amazing. Uh, the the whole thing with the mugshot and the indictments and, and the, the latest one in Atlanta, for the man to have the 
just capacity to just bounce right back off that and, and go on shows and things like that. It's amazing to me. It really is. I mean, the guy, even, even though we know that he didn't do anything wrong, you still look at the penalty uh, potential for these things. And it's like, wow, that that's like, uh, will make you pay attention. Well, think of what an inspiration he does. You know, 2015, he comes down the golden escalator with his supermodel wife in his hotel. And he is one of the most famous people in the world, one of the richest people in the world, hugely successful, successful television show. And he chooses to step in the breach for the American people. Yeah. And if you follow him throughout his career, whatever his political affiliation is, he has always been for the working class, for the American dream, to let America be, to make America be great again. Like he's been saying that for years. And he is a true American story where, yeah. you know, he's been yeah. rich, he's been broke, he's bounced back. Yeah. He's yeah. all of us. And it's, it's just, he's an inspiration to me. I, well, I mean, when I, when I first heard or when I first saw that he was going to run, it made so much sense to me. Because just like you said, uh, I remember him when I was in uh, um, in uh, getting ready to get him, going to the military in the late eighties. His name was Donald J. Trump. Yeah, Trump. I mean, that Trump with the gold on it. That I mean, that's how right. you knew him. he was. He went on the talk shows. He and oh, by the way, he wasn't racist back then. Uh, but you know, he went on the talk shows. He went on all those, and everybody had him. And um, then all of a sudden, we didn't hear from him for a while. He had went into, I mean, you know, some legal things and stuff, and uh, people didn't have him on. And, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> he came back with The Apprentice, and he he seemed like he was bigger and, and, and better than he was before he left. And like you said, that's the American story is you work hard to get to a certain place. You're going to you're gonna hit some pitfalls. You're going to run into some snag. You're going to run into some problem. But if you can turn that around, America has the resources for you to turn that around. And he, he, he turned it around. I was like, if there's anybody that can fix what Barack Obama did to this country, he can do it. He's not part of the establishment. He's not a politician. He And, and the whole time that he was in office, I never saw him as a politician. I never saw, I saw him as a businessman. From the beginning, I mean, Hutch, Hutch I, mean, um, I used to go around saying, you know, he's trying to uh, do, he's trying to shrink eight years worth of stuff into four years. You know if how you, you look at him, you say he's a businessman. Not only is he a businessman, he's a cutthroat businessman. Oh, yeah. You look where he, you look where he made his fortunes, at least his initial fortunes. Yeah. In New York City, he's fighting against five crime families who yeah. charge a tax on every yard of concrete. That gets poured, and that dude poured some concrete. Yeah, and, and the second place is down in Atlantic City, which is polluted with the Bruno crime family. Right, and he did the same thing there. Normal people can't do that. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it too, President Trump is what our government is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be the swamp of these lifetime politicians that work out all these backdoor deals. It is an American citizen standing up. And saying, I'm going to go serve the government for four years, eight years, 12 years, however long. And then I'm going to return back to my normal life. And that's how it's supposed to be. It was never intended for somebody like Joe Biden, as horrible as he is, to be in government from birth till death. That was never how the United States was supposed to be. And, it, it, you know, I, I showed one of the comments from Wilbur. No matter what you think about President Trump, I do believe he loves America. And. And I think Tracy also had a great comment, never voted before Trump, he opened my eyes. I think those are two kind of reoccurring themes. Trump loves America and he is an American. And I think all of us, no matter what you think of what Trump's done, are thankful that he has exposed the corruption in the media, in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. in, in all those localities. And it's it's we'll, we'll never be the same. Thank God for that. As I was saying, uh, we interviewed him five times before he ran for president. We, uh, we, uh, a couple of times in person at CPAC at the Republican leadership um, convention in New Orleans. Uh, and, and let me tell you something, when he walks in, 
<laughs> the room goes dark, okay? The, bring, the room goes bring dark. Shade. He brings shade. He brings shade, man. I mean, he, he brings those security guards. I mean, those and those are some uh, meat and potato boys that come in there, boy. They, <laughs> they came in. But um, if there's one thing that I have to say, well, I have to, I, I, I have a lot of good things to say about President Trump because he didn't know me from Adam. And he gave us interviews on our podcast back then. In 2016, I think we were the first podcast to interview uh, seven or eight of the presidential candidates back then. But we interviewed President Trump like five times before he got into office. As a matter of fact, we interviewed him the month before he he um, came um, went down the escalator. He's like, "Well, next month, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to have um, someone else." I said, "Well, you can do it right here, right now, right now, Brent." I said, "No, Wayne, no, no, no. I, I'll do it, you know." But um, he, I think that's why he resonates so much with Americans, is that he that he doesn't see himself as these snobbish type of billionaires that set themselves up are so elite. It's McDonald's. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Right, right, right. He's McDonald's. He puts ketchup on his steak. Kentucky fried chicken. I mean, you know, I mean, he, 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 he is us. Okay. Right. I, think, I us. think one of the most phenomenal things I ever saw, and I don't even remember what team it was, but he had a college football team to the white house and he laid out the spread from like right. Arby's Burger King, Pizza Hut. It was it was awesome. They loved it. Well, and if you ever watch the power of President Trump and how much he loves Americans, just watch when he goes out in crowds from the Iowa State Fair to East Palestine. I mean, that's when I really knew Trump was back. After that, Joe Biden promised to go there, still hasn't gone. It's been months. Donald Trump was there and just watching him connect with the American people. It's it's inspiring no matter what your politics are. I think you know, another I, thing that was really inspiring was when he was in Florida and he went to that pizza shop and Byron Donalds was there. Byron, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was there with his son and man, it was just awesome. His son was beaming from ear to ear, you yeah. know, eating pizza with, with Donald Trump. If, if y'all are just tuning in, President Trump will be joining us in just a few minutes here on Red Voice Media. If you have not heard of Red Voice Media, you need to go over and check them out. Redvoicemedia.com. You can also check them out on their Rumble channel at Red Voice Media. Uh, they are up and coming network of conservative voices. You can check them out. Uh, you can subscribe. You can um, get a, a, a you can get a few dollars off of your subscription. You just use the code name Wayne. But they have uh, uh, they have twenty four seven programming now. You can watch them on Apple TV. Um, you can watch them on um, Prime. Prime Video, you can watch them on Roku, uh, all other streaming services out there. Uh, just type in Red Voice Media, and you can uh, and you you'll be able to watch us. You don't have to watch us on your on your uh, computers or your phones anymore. You can watch us on your TV. And actually, I, you know, I kind of better on TV if you ask me. But yeah, um, there was a there was a little intro that uh, <laughs> it. There's the there's the intro we used to play. We will make America safe again, and we will make America great again. Let's not stand on ceremony here, Mister Wayne. All right, Donald <laughs> John Trump. Do solemnly swear. Congratulations, Mr. President. Today, I'm very proud of myself. Newsmax calls him a top 50 most influential black Republican in the country. Liberals call him. The president calls him Wayne. We do love Wayne, right? We love Wayne. For today, <laughs> in the name. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> no, but I, now, now. I, we will say this. We're going to ask him some questions. We uh, because he's very busy, man, and, and and believe me, I understand he's very busy. So uh, we're going to try to stay 
Well, we are going to stay within our time limit because we want to have him back on again. But uh, uh, there, there are some pressing questions that I'm sure that many of you want him to answer. Uh, and due to time constraints, we might not. Well, I know we aren't going to get to all of them because y'all sent in a lot of them. But <laughs> time and we, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. But but we do have a couple, and we are going to make sure that uh, we get we try to get some answers for you. Uh, again. We want to. I want to thank Liz Harrington. Uh, she helped me get this. I do. I, I want to thank Liz Harrington and um, and our wonderful connections with the Trump campaign. Um, believe me, we tried. We, we honestly, we have tried for a couple of years to try to get uh, uh, an, um, an interview with President Trump, uh, and the the connections. I don't. I mean, I don't know. They just wouldn't give him up. They would not give. They would not. It, it, it's like, wait a minute. You just interviewed him. Can I get a connection? With, they wouldn't do it. You know. But I am so glad that I was able to connect with his team, and they're awesome team too. They're awesome team, and they work with me. Uh, um, and um, you know, I I give them total total props for that. Uh, but I know he's a busy man and he's going through for like four indictments too. So he's a little busy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's a little busy, but, uh, he's our guy. He's our guy. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to walk away from that. I mean, <laughs> if, if he wasn't running, I don't think I would be, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't think I'll be voting. Thank God but, uh, he's running. Yeah, exactly. That, when I you mean, see those Keebler elves up on stage and you're like, if that was our choice, oh, yeah, come on, man. There's a, a, whole party, a whole party that wants war and a whole bunch of people that don't. Right. Yeah. I mean, like it boils down to that. There's a bull crap poll that just came out just uh, this morning, said that he lost six points off of his lead. I because saw of that. The, I was like, y'all crazy. Yeah, and and said that Rasa Swami went down. I saw. I, I mean, I saw that on, on on Clown Hall. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. I saw it on someplace else. And I was like, y'all, y'all really, y'all really trying to. Man, <laughs> the article. Yeah, the article was like issues. The article was killing me. It's like after DeSantis's win at the debate. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah. What? What do you mean his win? I know. Yeah. It's funny. I went back and wa rewatched part of the debate, some of the DeSantis parts, because I'm like, how bad is it? And it is politician. It's like Republican politician 101. Uh oh. Wayne Dupree podcast. Let's see. I think, let me, let me make sure this is President Trump's office. Yes. All I right. have President Trump on the line whenever you are ready. I can merge it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the podcast, the Wayne Dupree podcast, he has, uh, he is the 45th president of the United States and the leading nominee for the 2024 GOP nomination. Uh, and he's our dude. I mean, you know, I said, I said it before and I say it again. He's our dude, and I'm so happy to have him here. We're talking about President Donald J. Trump. Hello, Wayne. Um, there we go. Oh, man. What's up, man? You? <laughs> I'm good. I've been hearing you for a little while. I think you're great. I've known you for a long time, though. A That's long right. Time. You're a terrific guy. You know, President Trump, uh, uh, listening to you and watching you uh, take all this fire, from right. from from the media, from the Republican establishment, uh, from the Democrats, uh, many people right now are wondering how you are dealing with it and what is your motivation to continue to allow this to happen? Well, it's called Make America Great Again. We did something that nobody's ever done to the extent we did it. We had this country rocking and rolling and Everybody, African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, women, men, everybody was doing better than ever before in the history of our country. 
We had no inflation. We had no problem. It was like an amazing COVID came in. We had to do it again, but uh, we handled that so well. But but the, nobody has ever. We have, the country has never been more successful. And people were coming together. Believe it or not, people were coming together. And uh, now you look at what's happened to our country with the with no borders, millions and millions of people pouring in from prisons and from from uh, mental institutions, from terrorists. I mean, it, this, we're going to have this problem. Millions and millions of people, you talk about it on your show, far more than anyone understands. And you look at interest rates now are seven and a half, eight percent Nobody can get a mortgage. You can't get any money. Uh, you look at all of the things that are going on. I mean, this no, no border thing is so amazing. We have an Afghanistan situation where we're no longer respected because of that. It was the worst. I think most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. What happened? The way that we you wanted to get out. We I was all set to get out. I'm the one that brought it down. Mm -hmm. But we were going to get out with dignity and with strength. And now we look like we surrendered. It's so horrible. Well, let me. It is Mr. President Hutch Bailey Jr. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I I just wanted to say that courage courage uh, is contagious. And speaking for a lot of Americans, I want to thank you for yours. uh, Really. Uh, that that being said, um, you, yes, sir, uh, the federal government of the United States, I've been told, is the biggest employer in the world, the largest employer in the world. Uh, are, are you having any any thoughts about maybe reducing the federal government uh, as far as personnel go and agencies and things like that? I think uh, we learned uh, through your, throughout your presidency the hindrance that this deep state really is. So look, that's an easy thing to do. And it's an easy thing to say, but we can do things that are beyond that, far beyond that, like energy independence. We have more liquid gold under our feet right now than any other country in the world. We should be, we should be drilling. We should be producing clean energy. We should be selling it to Europe. We should be knocking down the cost of, you want to end that war really fast? Knock down the barrel cost of oil, and you'll find that Putin is going to drop out of that war very fast. Look, we should be ending that war. That war can end quickly. I will get it done very quickly. But we have so many things we can do to make our country rich again, and our country is now dying. Our country is dying. What they've done to our country is, you know, I say I have a, a speech, pretty standard speech line. I think I I can go even further. But if you took the first, the worst five presidents in the history of our country, they haven't done the damage to our country that Biden has done. And you I know, think I could increase that substantially. President Trump, this is Jason Robertson from Minnesota. It's an honor to finally get to Hi. talk to you. And- and behalf of myself, my family, millions of Americans, we can't thank you enough for the service that you've done for this great country. You are truly an inspiration to everybody. Uh, my question is, in your first term, it felt like you were getting more resistance from the Republican side of the aisle in a lot of instances than the Democrat side with the establishment like Mitch McConnell and some of those folks and kind of a two part or part one. What's your strategy going to be this time to make sure those people aren't and aren't slowing progress? And part two, what can we as MAGA supporting American citizens do to help you in that endeavor? Well, look, uh, Mitch McConnell was not good for the Republicans or for the country. He approved so much of the nonsense that you see all the the so-called Green New Deal, which now they don't even say Green New Deal. And they can't, they call it Inflation Reduction Act. And now they change that name too. you know. Uh, he what what he did is not even thinkable, frankly. He made it possible for the, them to get this stuff. And a lot of that is also causing this inflation, which, by the way, which eats countries alive. You know, if you look at history throughout history, go back hundreds of years, inflation is what kill. It's called the, the nation buster. It breaks nations. And all of that money that was approved didn't have to be approved is a big factor in the inflation. And it's also being wasted. It's not like we're, you know, we're, we're doing the things we should be doing, uh, yeah, but right. including fixing our military again. You know, I rebuilt our entire military and now it's a mess. We gave 82, $85 billion to Afghanistan, if you can believe it. Right. And that catastrophe that took place, we lost soldiers, everything, everything was bad. 
It was the worst moment, the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. But uh, if you take a look at what's going on with what he's doing, he's destroyed. They're destroying our country. Mm -hmm. Everything is the opposite of what it should be. I mean, everything. Now they want to have you get rid of your heaters in your home, right, your fans right. in your home. Right. Uh, they want they want no water going into your sinks and your showers. <laughs> they the whole thing is they want you to take all electric cars when they don't go far enough. They don't go long. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to go long. The, the people that they, they don't want people to leave their home, give them an electric car. You know, it's the whole thing is crazy. If people want electric cars, they should be able to get them, but they should be able to get what they want. And there are a lot of other alternatives to that, which frankly are much better, certainly in terms of long distance. Right. These cars don't go long. Or what are you going to do? Drive an hour and then you have to get a recharge. The whole thing is crazy. What's going on? President Trump, um, when when you are reelected, uh, can you push for the RNC to have legitimate minority outreach? Because it doesn't seem like the current leadership follows your blueprint for elections. Uh, um, uh, and we saw what you did with independents and minorities in 2016. And it seems like they're trying to live off of that, but they don't. Yeah. They haven't followed or they don't know how to implement what you did. And, uh, you know, I was just wondering if you would um, have any say or um, any type of plan for uh, minority outreach when you get in. Well, I do. And, you know, we did really well uh, with uh, black male voters. I don't know if you know, setting records. OK. Yeah, the I, black male vote. I've seen it online. The women will come along. Wait, they got to come along. I know they're going to come <laughs> along. But with the male, we, we, we got numbers that nobody's gotten before. And it's great. You know, it's great to see. Don't forget, I did criminal justice reform. Nobody really gives me credit. I'm the one that got it done, criminal justice reform, which was a very, very important thing. With the historically black colleges and universities, I was the one that got them hundreds of millions of dollars and on a you know on a long-term basis i got to know a lot of the guys that headed those colleges really good guys they kept coming to washington I said well we got to make a longer term deal for you you don't want to come up here every year they came up every year looking for money because they would they could never get anything of any distance and i got it for them i made a 10-year deal for them and and, you know, they so they really love me. I mean, they really do. I did something for them. I said, here's the bad part. You won't be coming up to see me anymore. OK, Cause yeah. you know, long, but, but I, I took care of them. Historically black. You're, these are the smaller colleges and the black colleges and universities play such a big role. Yeah. And I got them funded and taken care of. Nobody else did that. I did that. Right. And, right. I, you know, I've done a lot. Uh, if you look at uh, what I did with Tim Scott with uh you know for investing in the inner cities this was one of the great things and nobody wants to talk about it one of the great things so i've done a lot i think people understand it i think the the african-american population understands it so well yep and that's mr. why we did very well mr president um <clears throat> one of the best gifts that you've given the country and i'm speaking personally too about this is you you revealed the basic, the deep state in, in politics and in employees. And so I know when, you know, we're out here watching this and one day the light goes off and it's like, wow, this deep state thing is real. Yeah. When did you realize it yourself? Because I think I, I would guess that you didn't realize it was like that uh, in 2015. Yeah, I heard the term deep state for years, but I never really thought it was a, a big factor, but it is, it's very deep. And dirty. I've got rid of Comey. I got rid of a lot of these people, but it's a very, uh, it's very, it's a very bad place for our country. And these are people that hate our country. And uh, you know, when I got rid of Comey, it was like somebody threw a rock into a hornet's nest, and everyone started going yeah. through. That's when the insurance policy thing came up. Remember when they were talking and they said uh, to each other, "The lovebirds, right?" Uh, they said uh, <laughs> something to the effect, "You, you know what I'm talking about." No, yeah. no. No, yeah. no, she'll win, she'll win. But if she doesn't win, I think she said she'll win 100 million to one. I said, that's a lot, you know, 100 million to one. And I felt I was going to win. So I said, is there something wrong with my 
my calculations, but she will win a hundred. But if she doesn't win, we have an insurance policy. That was that set off a light bulb to everybody. We have yeah. an insurance policy, and the insurance policy was Russia, 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 which now has been judged to be a total hoax, which it was a total hoax. I mean, Russia. I was the one that you know ended their pipeline. I was the one that did all of the things. And you would have never had Russia, by the way, go into Ukraine. All of those dead people would be alive today, all of them, every one of them. And the place wouldn't have been obliterated. They would have never done that. Putin would have never done that if I were president. You know, President Trump, we can't wait to have you back in the White House. And all all the three of us and our audience is really praying for you and your family. And before we get you out of here, just real quick, how's the rest of the family holding up? We know you signed up for this and they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at you, but you've got Melania and Barron and the rest of your family. How, how's the Trump family doing? I think very well, but you know, it's always uh, unpleasant when I have to explain to my kids, by the way, I'm going to be indicted again. Uh, oh, dad, why, why, what, what happened? What is it? And I say, it's bullshit, but I got, <laughs> I'm going to be indicted again. And, uh, you know, and, you know, the public knows it because they have the best poll numbers I've ever had. They get it. You know, usually if a thing like that happens, that's the end of your pol political career. That's true. And what happens is they get it because they see that the nonsense that they're talking about. It's nonsense. But the public gets it. They fully understand it. And my poll numbers, I'm killing Ron to Sanctimonious. I'm leading him by 35, 40 points. I'm beating Biden. We're beating everybody by a lot. And, you know, we have to just keep it going. But it's not easy on a family. It's not easy on a wife who's a terrific woman, very popular person, very popular first lady. She works so hard. And and my children, you know, it's not an easy thing. Um, real, real quick, um, last question, because I know that you are a very busy man. Um, this, is, this is one of the questions from one of our listeners, loyal listeners. What are your plans to unify the country be beyond the media noise that paints yeah. you as a racist? Yeah. Well, I'm the least racist person there is. And, that we know. Uh, and a lot of my friends, uh, a lot of my friends are black and they like, they always come to my defense. They say, I've been, this, I've been a friend of his for 30 years. He's not a racist. If he was a racist, I wouldn't be his friend. Exactly. Period. But I have a lot of uh, people that I know that are black and that are absolutely, I mean, they, they fight harder than I do. And it's sort of very nice to see. Now, look, wh what will unify the country is success. We have to get back success. I, I will tell you, prior, just days prior to COVID coming in, we had the greatest success in the history of countries. There's never been anything. Everything was good. We had no inflation. We had no any. Everything was good. We we're energy independent. We we're going to be energy dominant. Everybody had a job and big jobs and good jobs. And I got calls from radical left people all of a sudden wanting to get together, wanting to. I mean, you've never seen a change because the country could not have been better. Then COVID came in and it, you know, turned over the apple cart, to put it mildly. But. We, we handled it and we handled it well, but you know, and that was something, whether it was me or somebody else, I think we really handled it well. The Democrat governors didn't handle it well. Those cities have really gone down the, the tubes. But, you know, if you look at what we've done, it was so incredible. We had a thing that was amazing and everybody came together. I was getting calls from people I would have never thought would have wanted to meet and they wanted to meet because it was all working. And then we, you know, we got hit with the COVID, uh, so I say that it'll all come together with success. If we can get success, I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. If we can get success to a level like I had it, everyone's coming together. Exactly. Well, listen, I got to let you go because uh, I want to have you back on again. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. And, uh, and, you know, we're having a whole round of new questions for you the next time. But we're praying for you, President Trump. We're God, praying God bless for you. God bless we're all praying, you're doing. Yeah, we're thank praying you for you and the team and the family. And just keep your head up. And we already know that you know where your strength lies. So uh, if there's anything that you want to uh, leave with our audience, the floor is yours. 
Well, I just want to say you've been a friend of mine for a long time now. We've been doing this for, I don't know, from 2015, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Done, yes, sir. We've done it before I even came down the escalator. Yep. And uh, you've been so great, and I appreciate it. And you have a great audience, too. You have Thank a great you. audience. And if he didn't, fellas, I wouldn't do the show, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but Wayne has been so great, and I just want to thank you. And we're going to turn this thing, with this country around. We have no choice. We're not going to have a country left. They are destroying our country. We're going to turn it around. We have to have a win in 2024, and we will do it. And we'll be back on your show soon, Wayne. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless. Okay. Thank, thank you all. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that uh, is a... 2024 GOP front runner right now. I mean, there's nobody even close. Nobody even close. And I'm telling you, I mean, man, if I could vote for him like 20, 25 times, I would. <laughs> You'd have to be a Democrat to do that, Wayne. Just saying. Hey, I used to be a long time ago. You know. I know. Me too. <laughs> if that is a Republican, you'd be thrown in jail for insurrection. <laughs> Get over you. Oh my goodness. Now we look, those weren't softball questions, or at least I don't think they were softball questions. But uh we hope and you know, hope to get them back on to answer some more questions. Uh we couldn't ask everybody's questions because we got so many. And the last thing that we want to do, I mean, it, you can say fair and balanced and all that, but but hey. That's our guy over there. That's our guy. We don't yeah. want him to say anything that's going to hurt him. No. With all no. this legal stuff up there. I mean, no, he, exactly. yeah. Notice. Oh, and notice I gotta we, didn't say, we didn't say nothing you about guys have talked to, no. You guys have talked to Trump before. I just wanted the opportunity to thank the man. And I think yeah. all of our listeners oh, can say we are so indebted to him. And what he's done in stepping in the breach for American citizens. It's, I, I really mean I, it from the bottom of my heart. It's, I do too. You know, the thing about it is, and I'll, I'll share this because we did it together. Uh, Wayne and I were on pre Trump doing the same kind of show before Trump. And I'll speak for myself. I believed in Romney and McCain and the yeah, Republican yeah. Party and the rule of law and the military. I believed in all that. And he changed my entire outlook of everything. He sure did. Yeah, he did. He did. He everything. Did. Yeah. And I think it was, the weirdest thing was he was finding it out along with us. Right. You know, we were all going down the same road. And it's like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's funny, too, and he brought up the lovebirds texts back yeah. and forth oh, yeah. because, I mean, that alone should yeah. put people in jail. I yeah. mean that that text exchange is worse than any crime they're they're accusing President Trump of. I'll tell you, you look at the background. I've I've seen some things that are starting to break lately. You talk about the lovebirds. You look you look in the background of those two and their parents, and you'd be amazed. They call him an FBI agent. Yeah, that was that week. Right. Go check out Peter Stroke. And I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna say it on here, but I don't have all the material in front of me, but look it up yourself. Interesting. Look at his background in Iran. Yeah. Yeah. And um and, and for let's see, let me get this. Let me get this out and get us back here. Uh you uh, you've been listening to us on Rare Voice Media again. Uh want to make sure that they get some props too. You know, they they um you know, we're broadcasting on th their network and uh again, you can watch them on Apple TV, Roku, um, Prime, um, Amazon Prime, uh, a lot of the streaming services out there, we are on, you know, 24-7. So, uh, but, yeah, I mean, I remember when he was going to D.C., the D.C. indictment. And I think that's really when it hit me. I know what they, I know all the stuff that they were doing to him. And, you know, you, you see it all the time. But it really hit me when he was in that uh, convoy to get his fingerprints and stuff like that. And when he went through the doors, I was like, this is wrong. This, I mean, this is wrong. This is wrong. And, and look, 
other presidents have done worse. Let's be serious. Other presidents have done worse. They've gotten people killed. Secretary of States have done worse. Benghazi. Yep. And and never faced anything. Ukraine. Ukraine. You you uranium one. Right. All this stuff that has been out there, and they haven't seen the 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 hard side of justice at all. They again, they're at home in their silk pajamas, with their. Oh, I didn't want to say that. I, I don't know. You know, well, no, you're lover. spot on, Wayne, and we talk about it on the show. The fact that we don't have an Epstein client list and Donald Trump's facing a hundred indictments. It don't make the, sense. It's wrong, man. It's wrong. Like Elon, Elon Omar's taking vacations from Qatar or something like that. Right. If, it, it's it's unbelievable the things that are happening. Menendez, hell, they they still didn't put him in jail. Right. All oh, the little kids that he was missing. Yeah. Right? In in uh, the Dominican Republic, and the crazy thing is, they sit and they they they, they do it right in front of our hate. They yeah. married they married uh, 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 who's that uh, New York lawmaker that got in trouble uh, that married Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, Weiner? You know, huh? Are you talking Wiener. Anthony Weiner? Weiner. We all watched that. That just was pushed right in front of our face. Yep. <laughs> You have a Jewish guy marrying a Muslim female. <laughs> Whose mother was the head of the sister, the br- Muslim sisterhood. Yes. And 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 nobody did anything. No, like oh, like oh, literally, yeah. the, literally the editor of the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because it just gets worse. Today they announced his trial date is the day before Super Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, it, it's almost like you see those videos of the kids in school who just stand up to the teachers like, what are you going to do about it? And the teacher can't do nothing. That's what it feels like right now, where the people in power are so corrupt, they'll do anything, and they just stand there like, what are you going to do about it? Like, I'll tell you, nothing- you know, the thing about this is you have to look at this with a historical perspective. This isn't the first time this ever happened to a country. This has happened countless times right? In countless countries, and it's just our turn. And, and I'll tell you, It's not looking good for the deep state. And I don't know, you know, in different countries, different events happen during these times. And sometimes it's very violently brutal. So I don't know. I'm not wishing for this, but it's something that it's not going to last. These fake prosecutions and all this stuff that they're calling evil good and good evil and boys, girls. It's not going to last. They can keep lying and they got the cameras right now and they got the mics. But guess what? We started getting mics, too. Exactly. Oh my God! Say it again. There yes, it is. they have had mics for all for many years, but now we got. Them. That's it. Now, now good we ones. got them. good ones. And very, very good ones. As a matter of fact, I was looking at the one at the radio station yesterday. It looked just like ours, Hutch. It looked. Just you ever like see? Ours. You ever see Russia's solid gold? I know. Oh yeah. I want yeah. that. I mean, too. I, I mean, too. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm jealous. We really need Russian money for the solid gold. Either that, either that, that or the one on your shirt. The one on your shirt. Well, that old, that old time one. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That at the RNC convention, I think. <laughs> I was going to say, I had to decide what shirt to wear for a Trump interview. I thought the Wayne Dupree <laughs> microphone shirt was completely appropriate. <laughs> Oh man, I. You know what? Let's let's um, let's let's take a break. Better pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And uh, sorry, Red Voice Media, we ran a little long. Yeah, 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 we did, we did. But we, we got did. President I, Trump. So yes, we did. Uh, Red Voice Media, President Trump was on Red Voice Media. That's that's something that can be played over and over and over and over again. Uh, Wayne Dupree, Hush Bailey Jr., Jason Robinson here on Red Voice Media. Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole 
to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe cusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! Welcome back to the Wayne Dupree Show here on Red Voice Media. My name is Wayne Dupree. We have Jason Robinson from Muslim Soda. Ooh. <laughs> I was trying to do my Ric Flair woo, but but I I failed miserably. I was I think coming down. Woo! Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Rick. And then and then and then we also have the, the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. What's up, Hutch? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> can Can I just say we're going to have to ask Red Voice Media? Is that the first time President Trump's ever been on their on their network? <laughs> He's playing. Yes. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, we're back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> the way the pre show is back. Yeah. You know what? I I I have to say this though. I I have to give a shout out to the Trump War Room and the MAGA War, the MAGA Inc. War Room. Yep. Because as everybody was sharing the notifications. I didn't see them share the notification and I publicly called them out. Sorry about that, but they did share it. And I do want to give a shout out to both of them. If you're not following them, make sure that you follow them. Um, and that is follow Trump war room and follow uh, MAGA Inc war room, follow them both as they put out information all the time. Um, also, uh, called out Steve Bannon and the War Room on Getter. So hopefully they are also sharing the same thing. The reason why I'm doing this is because uh, I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody up here has a problem with sharing other people's stuff. No problem with it. None. But there is some type of way where it, in our in our conservative world, that you you have people out there that want you to share their stuff, but you but they won't share your stuff at all. They won't share any bit of what you have. They won't do it. And you know, I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm not gonna fuss about it. I ain't gonna fight about it. I'll just, you know, we just live. I remember, I remember Bill Mitchell, Bill Mitchell, uh, who used to be a host on the show. Yeah, Bill Mitchell used to be a host on the show years ago. Uh, he was like. I'm not going to share your stuff. You ain't going to tell me what to do. I was like, I'm not begging you to share my stuff. I'm like, but if you're going to be part of the show, just share that you're going to be on the show, but you don't have to, you know, whatever, whatever. But karma's bite bit him in the tail. So <laughs> literally. <laughs> What's he going to do? And he realizes CNN and MSNBC won't give him the time of day. I mean, He's in uh, purgatory right now, man. I mean, right. he, he, is, he is literally, he doesn't know what to do. I mean, he's lost, what, 120, 130,000 followers already? You know? 
and I know he's not getting twenty thousand dollars from GoFundMe like he used to. I saw him on Tim Pool. He didn't do too well that day. Oh my God, that. Not to endorse another show, but that one with Laura Loomer and Kyle Becker. My favorite part is just watching Kyle Becker's face. And I know Kyle a little bit, but he was just like, like, at one point, Bill Mitchell told Kyle Becker, who's one of the biggest investigative journalists going, like, you should maybe do some research. I thought Kyle was going to punch the guy. He looked like he, he, he looked like a plastic person to me. I don't know. It was weird. Right. Yeah. That was just totally yeah. weird. That's the first time I've seen him in a long time. And it was like, ugh. You know I what, though? Thank- Here's the beauty of Bill Mitchell. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I want to thank our, our viewers on Rumble, our viewers on Getter, our viewers on Facebook, our viewers on, on Cloud Hub. I want to thank all of you because there are times out there that we have done this show that I know that y'all were out there. But it felt like other people weren't getting the the uh, um, the news, or they weren't getting the notifications. If wh- wh- wherever you are, follow us there. Click the follow, and click the notification. Subscribe. It's not really a subscribe, but click the notification so that you know when we go live. We only broadcast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We don't do Friday because. We need some time to ourselves. Y'all need some time to yourself for family wise. Think of it like that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. I was going to say Bill Mitchell to me is, is the embodiment of the establishment yes. Republican. It's a bunch of snobby, elitist, rich, old white guys. And many of them hopped on the Trump train just because I think initially they did because they thought, oh, he'll just be good for big business. And then when he realized he was good for blue collar working class citizens they were like okay we don't want to support this guy and now now that the party's fracturing a bit they've got their new Mitt Romney they've got their new elitist white guy who you know who's going to see what he's doing in Florida he's passing all these laws that benefit big business not citizens he's not bringing down your property taxes he's setting up board seats for his donors at Disney and yeah. that's the Republican Party that we need to get rid of. And yeah, Bill Mitchell is a living embodiment of that. I think it was it was personified on the debate stage, on the vice presidential debate stage. Right. You know, I mean, the only person up there, Ramaswamy, uh, who hasn't had time in the political world to be corrupted yet because he just got there last week. Uh, everybody was for the war. Right. You know, it's like none of us are for it. You people are nuts. It's such a disconnect. I can't believe they did that. I really can't. It, it's uh, you look at one of the things that that propelled the president uh, in the beginning was when he opposed McCain and said, "No, he's not yeah. a hero. And he yeah. took all kinds of fire for it. I'm going, yeah, finally, somebody's calling it out. You know, uh, it's ridiculous. We have not had a successful military campaign since World War II. Think about and- that. And we keep having these same, we follow the same blueprint. Let's get involved politically in a country, and then there's conflict. Let's let's feed the military-industrial complex, maybe send our soldiers over there to die with no start or end in sight, no mission, and it just makes people rich. I saw something. Yeah. Just go. Before the show. Kit, um, Kit, Kit, uh, Kit's CSO on Rumble just donated two dollars. Says, um, Trump should come up with a three point election plan to give us a focused mission which would create unity. Many are still floundering. It's time for marching orders, peaceful, of course. Um, another, another response from our uh friend Trey Trump and the Patriot 143 says, um, better job than Tucker. Great job. God bless Trump. Oh man. Thank you. So, thank you. Very kind. Border Town Mom on Rumble just donated two dollars and says Vivek is W E F Soros related. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, let's see. Kitso, the C is silent. Well, take the C out of there, then. No, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm playing. 
Uh, let's see. This was a fantastic interview, Wayne. Best one yet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, they were like, uh, is, uh, is, is, is Hutch and uh, Jason? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of them are going to be on there. J uh, Hutch is from Pittsburgh, Hutch from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Jason is from uh, Minnesota. I didn't say Muslim, so I said, <laughs> and Jason from Minnesota. So yeah, he. I mean, uh, he took him. He he. You know, I mean, that was honestly that was kind of in that was very informative though. It, if I had to pat myself on the back a little bit. That was informative. He, you know, he didn't bull crap in. <laughs> I got to say uh, something, though, because this doesn't happen often. My man had me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really? That don't happen too much. <laughs> Just a little bit, a little bit. I was going to uh, say, I got into the political stuff a few few years ago after Trump. Like, I always thought the government was corrupt, the whole thing, all of them, throw them all in jail. And Trump came down, and it was that first time I felt since Ross Perot that I felt mm -hmm. here's somebody fighting for us as American citizens. And, and I just see what, I, I just see how he's exposed everything. So like, I was just giddy, like, Oh my God, I get to just say, thank you. Like whatever you think of what he did as a president or whatever you think of him personally, nobody loves America more. And nobody has given short of soldiers who died for the country. Nobody has given more for the country than president Trump. No politician has. And, and I'll tell you, you know, and most people don't experience this. I'm not saying that I have, uh, but in the early nineties, I got in some trouble and I had to go to court and this and that, and the other thing, uh, this guy is facing down four state and federal indictments. Think about any time your back starts hurting or it gets yeah. a little hot outside or yeah. you start getting a little too busy. Think of that yeah. guy. And he 700 to, years didn't have to do any of it. He could have turned around, walked away, doubled his fortune and yep. sailed off into the sunset with his beautiful family. And right. He didn't. He didn't. Yeah. A billionaire with a literal supermodel wife. <laughs> and he's like, I just want to go take on the deep state. Let's go guys. And all successful children grown and otherwise. Right. And, 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 and truthful. He said, no, I didn't know how bad the deep state was. I, I didn't know if I didn't know if I should use if I should pose the question that way, but no, I figured, no, why, no. It was I figured, great. Why not? He's been honest every time I, you know. I mean. Well, and I think that's the underreported part when you look back historically at at his first term, is dude showed up and he had an idea of how bad it was, and I mean think of that really like the lovebirds with their texts about where we've got an insurance plan. Like that's Gitmo level crimes. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. we impeached Nixon and he had to be pardoned for less than that. And, and that's these guys look at Millie, look at what Millie did. Right. I mean, that's, that's freaking un unbelievable. Yeah. Right. We, uh, we, we have some, we have some great interviews coming up this week. Uh, we have, uh, Tony Schaefer. Lieutenant Colonel Spooky. Tony Schaefer. Spooky. Yep. Spooky. Nice. He was on Spooky. the radio show yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah. He he uh he he got cut off due to some of the rain and stuff that he was there. So I was like, come on the show, man. Come and just just bring the video on the show. Just, you know, uh we have we have uh, uh oh my goodness. Um Colonel Rob Manis. Oh yeah, uh, you got Rob. Colonel Manis. I was going to say, I think he's Thursday. tomorrow, isn't he? Thursday, Thursday morning, Thursday. Uh, and I mean, you know, and I'm always talking to people and stuff, trying, trying to do that. But, um, you know, the thing is with the show, the thing where we wanted to go with the show is that we wanted to um, inform, educate you about what was going on uh, to make things a whole lot easier so that, you would see what was coming like we would see what was coming. Then we got stuck to the Pandora's box. We saw what was happening. We couldn't see it. And we're like, okay, now we got to tell you. We got to tell you about that now. And what also came out of the Pandora's box was the Republican Party. And their shiftless ass, uh, their shiftless selves coming out and doing the stuff to Donald Trump. Again, 
again, in my lifetime, I've never seen any political party, not one political party, turn on their guy that was sitting in the White House. Usually you work with that person to try to get as much done. They did not. Most of the stuff that was passed, and, and that, that, that says something about Donald Trump, too, because Donald Trump tried to work with Republicans when he got in there. And, I mean, honestly, he could have blew all that stuff up, and honestly, he should have. With one tweet. Uh, yeah, he could have blew all that stuff up really quick, um, especially uh, when uh, Paul Ryan came running to the White House to beg him to sign the omnibus bill. And, uh, you know, but I and I wish I could have asked him about that, too, because, well, I wish I could have asked him about the money that was being sent to Ukraine and the, and the little bit of money that he was asking for the border. I wish I could have asked him about how Congress did that. And how the Republican candidates right now are basically just blaming him. They ain't, ain't blaming them. They ain't, ain't nothing about the Republicans. It's just him. Just him by himself. And then the people on social media are like, well, you know, the buck stops with the president. So, yeah, it, yeah, it might stop with the president, but it has to go through everybody else too, you know. You know, you listen to McCarthy talking about fiscal responsibility or whatever. What's you know, the you know, first thing the House did when they came into session? They passed the omnibus bill. Right. It's the first thing they did. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, and now they got another another budget bill coming up in the next six weeks. I think they got to pass it. I yeah. mean, so, where, why didn't we negotiate the different agencies? Are we not going to do a budget again? Right. And that's coming up the end of September. That's the end of that. Yep. Well, and Wayne brings up a good point, too. And we had Mayor Staggs on last week, who's running against Romney, you know, for – for audience members, people watching the show, other folks on Red Voice Media, we need to find those MAGA candidates, especially in the primary, get them to us, send them to Wayne, and we'll we'll give them some airtime. We'll share them on their social media because if we don't send patriots to Washington to fight with President Trump, and be on his side in this battle, it's just going to be an uphill battle. And all those rhinos, and as it comes up to the next budget, we'll share who voted for the omnibus bill. We'll share. Think of those 20 members of the House that oppose McCarthy. All the other members of the House aren't on your side. We should primary all of them with MAGA candidates. Yeah, we need to. And and when Jason says MAGA candidates, we need many of you to start coming out from amongst the uh, the brushes. We need many of you to start uh, leaving, leaving. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna say it, leaving the basement. We we need you to come out and start running for office. We need you. Okay, this is Wayne Hutch and Jason. We need you to start running for office. If you're MAGA and you believe, I mean, and you and you want to make this country great again, you you want it that. Uh, city sitting up on the hill, shining city sitting up on the hill. If if that's what you believe and that's what you want, if you want to change the way that this country is going, we need you to run because the people that are running right now, they're not running for the betterment of their country. They're running for the betterment of their pocketbooks. Yep. And that's and and that's not what we need. Okay. Uh, again, I don't know whether y'all noticed, but food is going up. Ooh. Every day, food is going up. It's crazy. You look at you look at, and it's quietly going up. I don't know. I mean, it's like I had, I spent two hundred some dollars. Well, I looked in the I looked in my cart and I was like two hundred some dollars. Where I where's spent, the rest of the stuff? I spent forty five dollars for a bushel of tomatoes. Yeah, it's funny when we went grocery shopping. <laughs> we didn't get anything expensive. We didn't have to go. Usually we get meat from the butcher shop and stuff, and it was the same thing, 200 bucks for just basic expensive food. And and one place that they're getting you that you don't really understand, but one place that they're getting you, yes, they have increased uh, uh prices on food, but they're really increasing prices on stuff that you need around the house. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and you look I, at it, it's affecting <laughs> too that the, the fast food world is changing yeah. i don't know if you guys know it but arby's just bought subway oh really you know and there's, Bur- 
there's Burger Kings closing all around my area. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I saw yeah. the buildings. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, Arby's it's is buying Subway. Yeah, I mean that's not the names of the companies, but the company that runs Arby's is buying the Subway franchises. Not the franchises. it's like Yum Brands or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. And you're going to see more of this too. I mean, because when you have a franchise situation like that, they're they're dependent. The franchise owners are dependent upon the corporate supplies. Right. And if the corporate right. supplies keep getting more expensive and more expensive, the franchise owner runs out of options. Right. You know? Well, and President Trump hit the nail on the head. All of the cost starts with energy. Yes. And we could be the leader in producing energy in the world like we were when Trump was president. It drives every cost down in America. And you, it's good for the country. Mm -hmm. You look at the evil. That is the World Economic Forum. Look at what they try to do to you at home. They want to take your gas stove away. They want to take your hot water heater away. They want yep. to take your ceiling fan away. They want to take your gas-powered car away, your lawnmower, this, that, and the other thing. Everything to make you miserable because what they're doing is they're mentally preparing you to have nothing. Basically. And, 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 and. Uh, not say anything about it. Exactly. Be quiet about it. Be quiet about it. Exactly. Yeah. The, I mean, the way, <laughs> the way that they, they, we talk about the First Amendment, but it's so strange that people aren't, it, people aren't using the First Amendment because they're afraid about of what you said. What you said the other day. When's the last time there was any conservative protest about anything? Anything at all. They killed it. All. That's that's a constitutionally protected thing. Not the free speech part. The right to assemble. The right to yeah, assemble. The right to address right. your government. Yep. I mean, yep. it, it's like gone. They and take that's, be, that's because. And, oh, go ahead. Right. I was going to say that's because we're won by the Washington generals. They don't want to win. They sure, don't right. want to inspire yeah. anybody to take action to change the government. Yeah. You know, and, that mayor. And they went the, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> We're all mayor, fired up. That mayor out in uh, Nevada. Yeah. He's got it. He, yeah. he hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. Resist these masks. It's yeah. almost time for finals, ladies and gentlemen. They're coming soon. What are we going to do? Are we going to pass or are we going to fail? <laughs> I'm not. And look, one of the reasons why they are they've been so successful in breaking down the first amendment right to uh, gather together right to uh, protest basically from, from is they is that they went to the 14th amendment and they got one word out of there and labeled an entire movement, half of the United States as insurrectionists. Yep. They did. I was thinking about that and, 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 I was listening to some inf some people break down the 14th Amendment. Y'all ain't got them. Y'all ain't got them. Y'all ain't got them on the 14th Amendment. You can push that out there into the lexicon. I mean, you can push that word out there, and but you ain't got them. You ain't got them on the 14th Amendment. But the word insurrectionist is there. And you've labeled the January 6th protesters as insurrectionists, even though they aren't. You did that to silence them. You you did that to put your your you, you, your knee on their neck so that they won't say anything. That's that's what you did. And America people, y'all need to realize y'all have the power. Y'all had the freaking power. God darn damn, y'all had the y'all have the power. They are afraid of you. All right. And again, I'll go back to this. If you are MAGA, and 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 you want things changed. You need to start running for office. That's the only way that this thing is going to change. Start running for office. And don't change your principles. America first. America first. America first. America first. We have fell as a country because we've been we've been dilly dallying over here. We've been giving them billions over here. We've been doing this right here. I'm not taking care of our borders. Not taking care of our schools, not take care of our roads, infrastructure, not take care of anything. This country is almost well, 
they probably have bankrupt themselves we're over a couple target, times though. over. We're you over know what I'm saying? Target. The target it, trolls are here. Are they? Oh here? yeah. Are they here? Good. Great. Uh, yeah. Great. We picked up a handful of new of new viewers. We appreciate it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad to have you, and I hope that you come back tomorrow because we have to go because <laughs> uh, Red, because Red Boys Media has programming. But I tell you what, bring your ass back in tomorrow, and we'll talk about some more stuff. See you. We want to be you. <laughs> After we're all crocodile, Jason, give me some, give me some last thoughts. Uh, two thoughts. One, wife and I were just talking about it this weekend. We've switched to buying local meat at the meat market. Do it. Thank me later. Find your local butcher. Buy all your meat there. So much better. Uh, thing two, just a shout out to my high school English teacher, Mr. Yost. He was fighting with me on Facebook about how corrupt Trump was. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Yost. When I was growing up, you were a Democrat and you understood how corrupt the Republican Party was. And I agreed with you. Now you need to understand that the Republican Party is still corrupt, but so is the Democrat Party. It's the yeah. government against us, not Democrats versus Republicans. Thank and Zelensky much. got paid because right. Zelensky mm -hmm. bought a luxury mansion in Egypt via his mother-in-law using Western aid money. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Yost. And we get to pay for their election or they're not having it. There it I don't is. know if you saw that. Just like oh. America. Oh, my God. We're yeah, seeing him.